Good morning, Living Hope Church. There's some lightning going on right now. I think that means we're supposed to stop talking, so sit down. I'm just kidding. I love all of the chattering going on, actually. It's nice to see everybody getting along and, you know, saying hi to people. It's every introvert's best dream ever. All right, guys, so if you will happily take a seat, thank you so much. My name is Pastor Rachel. I'm the children's pastor here at Living Hope Church, and I'm excited to be able to speak in the big adult service this morning. It's always so different and so exciting uh, for the kids to get to see how a big person service is run. So before we get started, let's have everybody grab their handy dandy Bibles and turn to John chapter 15. Again, that is John chapter 15. If you brought your Bible with you, you get a gold star. If you did not bring your Bible with you, you don't. Nope, just kidding. You can also get a gold star because we have Bibles under the seats in front of you. So if you want to grab one of those, go ahead. If you don't have a Bible in the seat in front of you, which some of you might not, it will be up on the screen. So no matter what, you get a gold star. So once you have your Bible, go ahead and turn to John chapter 15. So I brought with me some absolutely beautiful flowers. And I actually need some help from a small child. If I can, James was the first one to raise his hand. We'll have James. All right, James. Now, if I were to give you a bouquet of flowers, I think I would pick these ones. I would keep these ones for myself and you can have these ones. How's that make you feel? <laughs> It makes him feel sad if you could tell. Okay, but wait, hold on. Uh, why do you not want these ones? He doesn't know. Do they, are they like, they're, they're, they're what? He said they're dead. <laughs> well, they smell fine. Like, <laughs> okay, so why do you think they're dead? Because they look like it. <laughs> uh, what causes a flower to die, James? Do you know? Without sun, water, or soil. Three things of which these flowers do not have. So these flowers are actually fake. Do you want to feel them? Yeah, they're actually fake. So they will forever be alive. And so what do these flowers not need? <laughs> They don't need anything. James, you are a rock star. Can I give you a high five? Good job. Thank you. You can go take a seat, buddy. Thank you so much. Let's give him a round of applause. All right. So these flowers actually once upon a time did used to be very beautiful. I've had them for about a month or two. <laughs> and uh, I am not a green thumb by any means. This is what they look like after a week. And uh, the reason why is this cup is actually completely empty. There's a few like dead leaves in it, but there's no water in it. I forget to put new water in and um, I forget to put them in the sun and I really don't give them any soil. So I'm very bad with flowers, much to my husband's sadness because he loves to give flowers. <laughs> I love to receive them. I'm just very bad at keeping them alive. If you give me a cactus, now that thing is golden because it doesn't need anything to live other than water once a year. So uh, it's a perfect plant for me. Now these flowers need, he said the three things that they need, water, sunshine, and soil. They do need those. They also have a very important thing that helps them to grow in the first place. One is a seed. That seed will eventually sprout roots in the middle of the soil in which it sits, which these flowers once upon a time sat in. So it's really no wonder that I kill all my plants, but when they come without their roots already, they're already kind of goners. It just depends on who you are, how long it's gonna take for them to die. If you're my mom, these would have lasted probably 20 more years. So. Uh, plants will come up out of the ground because of the root system beneath them that is supporting them and sustaining them and supplying them with the nutrients and everything that they need. 
uh, cut the top off, and your plant's a goner because it's no longer connected to that system. It's not supported to its life. It'd just be like if you took out our organs or if you kind of, you know, cut off a head of a person, they'd be dead. So <laughs> it's the same thing with a plant. They will die. So I brought in a couple of different things to illustrate the point as well. I brought in these things. How many of you know what this is? Just It's tiny up here, but who knows what? It's a box of raisins. All right, and uh, these crusty old things <laughs> are nasty. <laughs> Actually, no, I really like them when they're covered in chocolate, but otherwise, I'm not a big fan. Anyways, raisins. These are the crusty grapes that have gone awry. Uh, some people do still enjoy them, which kudos to you. You like dried fruit, and that's okay. Uh, and then I brought in... Let me open this giant box. I learned, I need your help. <laughs> yep. I'm going to invite my husband to come up here and open this box of grapes for me. <laughs> so we brought in the raisins, we brought in the grapes, and we brought in these two fruits for a very specific reason. The grapes, thank you so much. The grapes, oh man, just look at that. They hang off of this vine. And they just sit here, and they're big, and they're full, and they look like a bunch of luscious fantastics. So they look healthier, they seem happier, they're big and full and hydrated, and they're so juicy that it's like having a drink and a snack all in one. So obviously, these grapes are connected to their vine. Once upon another time, these vi this vine was connected to an even bigger vine, which acted as the grape's life support system. So eventually they underwent a process where they were disconnected, and they are now available for consumption by all sorts of creatures, hamsters, uh, bunnies, people. We can all eat these things. So obviously... These used to be connected to a bigger vine. The raisins started off this way. Eventually, they were disconnected. They became intentionally maybe dried up and withered. Interestingly, the Bible talks about this just like it talks about everything else you can think of. So, I said a scripture verse earlier. Its name was John chapter 15. How many of you remember it? How many of you guys have got it memorized already? That's okay, I don't either. So <laughs> we're going to read John chapter 15, and we're going to start with verse 1. If you guys are there, raise your hand. If you actually still need a little time or if you're going to use the screen, raise your hand. Awesome. Good. No, that's a good thing. That's good that everybody uses something. So follow along in your Bible or on the screen. John 15 verse 1 says, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Continuing in verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Wow. This verse is loaded with some incredible and powerful imagery basically saying that the dead plants are going to be, you know, thrown away, much like these flowers will when I go home. 
and the live plants are going to continue to be pruned to produce even more fruit. So now obviously we are, we are Christians. By definition, we want to follow and serve God to the very best of our ability. This verse makes it perfectly clear that we can pick one of two options. We can choose to stay connected to the vine or we can choose to disconnect. Both have subsequent consequences, consequences that are not always bad because consequences can be good. We're going to check out both first, but first we're gonna, uh, we're gonna check out both, but first we're gonna look at what it means to fall away from the branch. So how many of you guys know that life is full of choices? Full of them. There was this really cool video that I watched. Uh, it had kids, I think they were ages five and six. They stuck these kids in a, in a monitored room with one-way glass where the adults were able to watch them. There was a single table in the middle. And on the table for the child was a plate with a marshmallow in the middle. The child had to sit in front of the marshmallow for 15 minutes without touching the marshmallow. If they did not touch the marshmallow, they would get another prize at the end of the 15 minutes. If they did touch the marshmallow, they did not get the extra prize. So about three out of four kids totally ate the marshmallow after like two seconds. And there was one kid who actually made it to the end. They got a second marshmallow as their reward. It was their choice. And that 15 minutes probably felt like forever. But it was the child's choice whether or not they were going to eat the marshmallow. As Christians, or as people in general, we all have the choice to say yes to God or no. And instead of 15 minutes waiting to find out what our prize is going to be, we have an, undef an undefinite, indefinite amount of time waiting for Christ's return. So whether you're on the yes choice or the no choice, our prize is heaven. And we have to wait and be patient and expectant of God to continue to move, continue to work in the meantime. So we have to say no to the things of this world in order to say yes to the things of God's heaven planned for us in the future. So that ties into this branch being God. If we are in God as he in, is in us, He'll support us and sustain us until that time. We'll grow, we'll learn, we'll ripen, and we'll become a part of eternity in heaven once that 15 minutes is over. Just like a flower or a fruit stays strong and alive when it's on its vine, so we'll stay strong through life when we're with God. On the other hand, what happens if we choose to fall away from the vine? Well, that's when we begin to wither. We'll still look good. I mean, we'll look like this for a few days. And after a short while, we'll slowly start to turn into this. We'll wither away, we'll shrink, we'll crumple in on ourselves, and eventually die. Nothing will support us, nothing will sustain us, and we won't enjoy eternity with God in heaven. After that 15 minutes is up, We'll be like the raisins instead of the grapes. The choice is all ours. So, who is someone who fell away from the vine? Well, a prime example is Cain, and the story is found in Genesis chapter 4, but I'm going to summarize. Feel free to look in your Bibles to fact check me. When participating in tithing, Cain brought some of his fruits and his veggies as an offering. His younger brother, Abel, brought to God the fatty and best meat off of some of his best livestock. When God didn't accept Cain's offering, Cain eventually became furious, and he killed his brother, Abel. Cain effectively turned his back on God in that moment. And you see, the issue wasn't even with the offerings. It was with the heart and the obedience behind them with what God was asking them to do. Abel was willing to sacrifice the biggest and the best of what he had 
in order to remain attached to the vine of God. However, refusing to grow and refusing to learn, Cain selfishly kept the best for himself and disobeyed God's command for the best. He would not be supported by the loving God who was trying to help him, even though the process of help would be painful. It was Cain's choice. How many of you guys know that when we're growing, it doesn't always feel good? Especially kids. How many of you guys have ever had like a growing pain? You know, like your legs hurt, your arms hurt. It doesn't feel nice. And to my adults, maybe life is trying to teach you an obnoxiously hard lesson and it can be awful. Growing doesn't feel good. We can oftentimes know that the Creator, our God, is prepping us to be okay later in life because growing can hurt. But if we stay attached to him, we'll be okay. We'll make it. So now how about someone who remained connected? Now we're going to talk about our friend Daniel, whose story is in the book named after him. This is actually probably my favorite story in the Bible. I really like the Veggie Tales rendition. So the uh, Daniel was working for King Darius, and so were a few other guys who were trying really, really hard to get promoted. And then there's Daniel, who just wants to obey God. So the other goons who wanted promoting soon learned that King Darius was planning to promote not a single one of them, but Daniel. The outrage. So they thought of a plan that would get Daniel in trouble. Knowing that he worshiped God and only God, knowing that Daniel worshiped God and only God, they got the king to sign a decree saying that anyone who worshiped a deity that was not the king would be thrown into the den of lions. You know, that obviously included Daniel. And did Daniel let that stop him? No, not for one second. He prayed, and he worshipped, and he sought God anyways. Well, naturally, since Daniel was the target of this law, he was caught, and he was thrown into the lion's den, much to the king's dismay. You see, King Darius, he liked Daniel. He knew that Daniel was a trustworthy and godly man. He didn't want to see Daniel hurt. But at the heckling and peer pressure of the other guys, he followed through with putting Daniel into that lion's den. Now, normally, lions will happily eat you and me just like they would have happily eaten Daniel. But Daniel continued to worship God even in the midst of bleak circumstances. And surely enough, not one lion messed with him. He was put through an incredible and I'm sure painful trial. I can't imagine what it would have been like to be like, I worship God. Yeah, good, uh, go to jail. That would probably be the equivalent now. And it'd be like, wait, what? In some countries, that is the case. For Daniel, it must have been hard to hear, you're gonna go to a lion's den. That had to be scary. You're gonna go be thrown into the lion's den. You've basically got no hope. But because he clung to the vine that is God, he was able to grow and ripen. And the king determined, after pulling Daniel out alive, the king determined that he also would worship God. See, through our growth, we encourage others to grow as well. The choice was his. Not a single lion even messed with him. The choice was his. The choice is ours. In real life, the choice is ours. The Bible was real life. In life today, the choice is ours. To teenagers and kids, the choice isn't your mom's and dad's. To 
to couples, the choice is not your husband's, it's not your wife's, it's not your boyfriend, girlfriend, whoever. It's not your grandparents, it's not your aunt, it's not your uncle's, it's yours. The choice is yours. My mom and dad can't make the choice for me. My husband can't make the choice for me. It's mine. The choice is yours. In real life, I've known people who have not clung to the vine. I've had friends who didn't understand or didn't care. I've known pastors who let down entire communities with moral failures. Family who just gave up when the going got too tough. In real life, I've known many people who have clung to God with their lives. Friends who've encouraged others to keep going. Pastors who've built up communities by living unreservedly for God. Family members who've persisted through some of the worst tragedies, but somehow, through clinging to the vine, have inspired others to know that it can be okay. The choice was theirs. The choice is ours. So in my life, I have been tempted to tell others to ditch God, that he wasn't worth it. I'd been so hurt that I couldn't understand how anyone would even want to follow him. I've been on the edge of letting go of the vine and saying, nope, that's not for me. Also in my life, I have clung so desperately to the vine, knowing that God was my only hope because I'd been hurt so badly that I didn't think I could survive without God. I'd tell people to trust him, to cling to him, to just hold on because he would not fail you. And I've been holding on to the vine, saying, yes, God, please keep me. The choice is mine. The choice is yours. There will be temptations that come. There will be hard balls that life will throw at you that may make you want to say, no, not for me. But I promise that God's faithfulness will always, 100% of the time, ring true. He will always support you. He will always carry you and sustain you because God is the vine. The vine does not let go of you. The choice is ours. What one are you going to choose? When you walk out those doors, which one are you going to choose? When you go to work tomorrow morning or later today, which one are you going to choose? The choice is ours. So we are going to close off this service. And before we do, let's have everybody, we're going we're gonna to take a few minutes to pray. So we're going to have everybody bow our heads and close our eyes. And today we've heard a few sides. We've seen both sides of the coin, the people who've held on to the vine and the people who have let go. We've seen situations where it can be easy to say no in our real lives, and it can be easy to say yes. Today, if you want to make the choice, whether you've made it before or whether this is your 164th time making the choice, if you want to choose God today, Please raise your hand. And I'm totally raising my hand. I want to choose God today. And if you, you can put your hands down. If you're unsure of where you stand, that's okay. You're surrounded by a family who, in this building, loves you and will walk with you and help you on your adventure. And we would love to pray for you this morning as well. So if you raised your hand, and if you didn't, we're going to pray together this morning. So Father God, we come before you this morning, and thank you so, so much that you are 
the vine that we can cling to. Thank you, God, that no matter where we stand in our life, whether we are happily clinging to you, knowing that you've got us, or whether we are getting ready to let go, thank you, God, that you will chase after us, that you will run after us, and that you will faithfully pursue us with 100% of your effort. Thank you, God, that you do not let go of us no matter what. God, I pray for everybody in here. I pray for the hearts of the people here today that you would touch us, help us feel you, help us remember why we cling to you, and that's because you are a loving God. You're a powerful God who is mighty enough to say, I will carry you through all of life's circumstances. Help us to cling to you, God, with 100% of our effort. God, as we walk out these doors today, let us remember to choose you in each circumstance that comes our way. Help us remember to choose you in the small moments, in the big moments. Help us remember to choose you. God, you are worthy of all of our praise. You are worthy of all of our worship. We love you so much, God. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. And with that, you guys are dismissed. Every child's favorite sentence at the end of a school day. All right, feel free to go. I guess it's probably too early for lunchtime, but you know, you could have second breakfast. So go ahead, have an excellent day, guys.